and now we're worried about people coming up the river. A montage of images, men in 1850s clothing gather in a circle in front of a two-story greenhouse. Four other men, one holding a wooden box, walk up a pathway. A judge shows off the empty box. A seated man with glasses, two men in top hats. First order, please. We have a couple of questions for you before you vote. So under the United States Constitution, voting was run by the individual states. And so each state had its own laws on who could vote and how the process was done. It's still that way today. Missouri has laws on who can vote and how the process goes. And so when you go to the polling place, everything that's done is done under Missouri state law. In the 1850s, again, Missouri uh, had laws on who could vote and what the process was. And so our demonstration today shows how that worked. Three men in long coats. The middle one opens a wooden ballot box and pulls out two keys. I think so. Gentlemen, gentlemen, have you step up and observe. It's empty. Are you sure? Please step up. I see your tax receipt. Thank you. Under Missouri law, any white male citizen above the age of 21 had the right to vote. You didn't have to go and register or anything. You showed up at the polling place in your local neighborhood on election day. First voter, step up please. A seated man with black cap motions for the next voter. See your tax receipt. There you go. First you visited the clerk and you showed that you have paid your poll tax. Now, poll tax was every white male citizen above the age of 21 had to pay 50 cents a year. And that money was used to pay for elections, the cost of elections. And so it was called the poll tax. And so when you paid your property tax, that poll tax was part of it. And so you would show your tax receipt showing that you had actually paid your poll tax. Then you went up to the table and there were three election judges and you had to persuade all three of those judges that you should be able to vote. And so it was up to those judges to decide if you were an eligible voter or not. And they would ask questions to basically confirm that yes, indeed, you should be voting in that election. So are you a native born citizen of the United States of America? Paul Rosewood, you know good well I am. And where were you born? I was born in St. Louis County. And where were your parents born? In Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. All right. Do you have any questions, gentlemen? Uh, yes. Uh, have you already voted once today? No, not today. That was the last time. Uh, are you, uh, do you own land or are you a higher hand? I own 180 acres out here. 180 acres. What do you grow? Whatever I feel like, which right now in these times is not much. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sir, are you, what is your uh, nationality of origin? My nationality of origin? I was born here in the United States. Yes, but your people. My people? What, from Boston? Yes. Where, did, where were their people from? Well, they came from the Emerald Isle. Uh, are they papists? No. No. We're good Southern Baptists. Okay. All right. I think this gentleman is acceptable to me. All right. All right. You may vote. The man drops his ballot into a slide in the yeah. box. Have the next voter, please. Step up. Men in a circle exchanging papers. In Missouri, the law said all it took was a piece of paper with the candidate's name and the office they were running for as your ballot and so you would put that in the ballot box and cast your vote but the political parties wanted to make it easy for the voters and so they would print out tickets green paper adorned with an eagle with a list of the names of the people that they wanted you to vote for and so you could actually take this ticket and put it in the ballot box as your vote 
This was known as voting the party ticket. Or if you chose, you could write down the names of the candidates and the offices that they were running for on a piece of paper and use that as your ballot. Different parties would have different lists and they would try to persuade you to vote their ticket to make it easy. So the process we're demonstrating today is how that worked. A man walks toward the three judges. Even though a voter was cleared by the clerk, he still had to persuade the three judges that he should be able to vote. First of all, we'd like to know if you are a natural born United States citizen. Yes, I am. Okay, and where do you live? I now live about a mile north of the Merrimack River. Explain to us a little further of where your residence is. Are you, is your residence on the in it's St. Louis North County? of the river, it's about a mile north of the Merrimack River, because along the Merrimack, the ground is so hilly, it's not worth any good any good for farming. I I'm I'm not satisfied that your residency is valid. Uh, by your description, I'm wondering if your residence isn't, is where your farmland is. We are the judges and we determine who can and cannot. And I think from what I, I know of where you live, you are not actually living within St. Louis County. Your primary residence is south of the Merrimack. I, mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to um, uh, not allow you to submit a ballot today, sir. Uh, can't accept that. Uh, will cause ill feeling. The voter shakes his head, tears up his ballot, and leaves it on the yes. table. Yes, sir, they, they have rejected you. Please, please leave. We you need, you need to line. move along. We have other we have other uh, individuals that can validate where their their residence is. Remember what I said about white males being allowed to vote. Sometimes those laws were challenged. Uh, the next voter, please step up. A close-up of shoes in the bottom of a woman's dress walking up the stairs. She meets the clerk. You better be up there paying her taxes. I'm here to ask to vote. I'm here to ask to vote. She's violating the law. I'm a, I'm a single woman. I'm a property owner. I have my property tax receipt. I'm well informed on the issues. Uh, this is a, a difficult situation, ma'am. You, you know you're not entitled to vote. This is not fair. Uh, okay. you, you're, 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 I will take this up with the women in my sewing circle and the people in my prayer group at my church. Uh, you may do it too. Not settle to be second place. Could you, well, we, we have one here. Could you please step aside? The woman turns around to look at the hecklers. Women can't vote. This is in New York. Go to Seneca Falls. They're, they're doing that up in Seneca Falls, New York. Just go up there. We'll be back. The woman leaves the clerk and walks into the crowd. Look up the 19th Amendment and also Virginia Minor and find out about her story and how it's connected to our old courthouse downtown. Your assignment then is to look at Missouri's law of how people vote today and compare and contrast the differences from 160 years ago and today.